Hello, I'm Keith Hilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop back with another instrument review for you. And today I have yet another member of the Butler Trombone family. Now, we've had a number of Butler Trombone videos come out over the last couple of months, but we've had new models coming into the shop all the time in the last couple of months. And I'd be really remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to talk about them, share them with you. So we've talked about the small board tenors. We've talked about the bass trombones. What we have not talked about yet is the C10 large bore tenor trombone. So what does this instrument bring to the table with all of the Butler innovations, everything they've done? Well, I'm excited to share that with you. So I'm gonna be, be taking a play on the C10 here. Gonna be talking about it afterwards. Today, I'm gonna to be playing everything on my trusty Bach 5G. <laughs> Chances are by now you will likely have seen one of our reviews of one of the other Butler trombone carbon fiber setups, or I'm sure you've seen other information out there about them. So we don't need to rehash everything that's going on with the Butler trombones team. Needless to say, they have really been doing a ton of development work and they are increasingly becoming a part of the trombone conversation. They're at least gaining a lot of notoriety for a lot of the right reasons. So we've talked in the past about the experience with the small bore tenors, both the large bore tenor, what the carbon fiber does for us, Really, I'd say the experience in a lot of ways is very similar with the C10 large port tenor. So a few basic specs here. As we would expect with a large port tenor, it has an eight and a half inch bell, um, obviously all carbon fiber, um, kind of a, I would say more of a con inspired bell uh, taper in a lot of ways versus a little bit more open taper like we see with the box. Um, obviously, uh, carbon fiber tuning slide, reverse tuning slide here, uh, standard tuning slide, carbon fiber as well on the F attachment side here, um, using one of the instrument innovation rotors, which are one of our favorites in the shop here, using uh, kind of the classic Minic wrap, open wrap setup here, um, 547 hand slide, 
slide. Now, of course, Butler is offering a whole variety of hand slides, including dual bore like 525, 547 hand slides. This one is a straight 547 hand slide here. Wider hand slide width. So even though I'd say it has a little bit more of a con style taper on the bell, more of a box style width on the hand slide here, a little bit more open, a little bit wider. Um, on the main tuning slide and the F side tuning slide, more of a, more or less of a kind of a single radius, while the hand slide crook has a dual radius hand slide on here. And of course they have their speedy flow water key um, and their carbon fiber lead pipes here, like we've been seeing over the last six months or so. They have two different carbon fiber lead pipes that are coming with this. Um, in this case, I was playing on the longer of the two and I'll talk about why in a moment here. So. Initial response with this, I found first off that the experience was quite a bit different between the two different lead pipes. I'd started off with the shorter of the two lead pipes because with a number of the other instruments, um, the especially like the small board tanners, I found that with some of the, the, the playing, the response of the, the carbon fiber lead pipes, they, they provide a little bit different resistance. And so I found that the longer, the shorter of the two lead pipes there helped to get the air moving through, helped to balance out a little bit of that resistance. But with some experimentation on this, I found that for me, the shorter of the two lead pipes was a little bit too open. It felt kind of fluffy. And what I was actually struggling to get is getting the, the right Compactness of airflow is maybe not the right word, but just the overall kind of speed of the air that these instruments need. Um, and I've talked about this a little bit in the past. The, the carbon fiber in general takes a little bit different kind of energy to get it to vibrate, right? I feel like I have to put a little bit more, not force in it to, but I have to energize the air a little bit more. With the carbon fiber lead pipes, I feel like that's even a little bit more so. And what I was finding with the shorter of the lead pipes, I was struggling a little bit to find that balance. But as soon as I put in the longer of the two lead pipes, it really cleared a lot of that up. And what I felt like I was able to get is a lot of the balance to the sound. I was getting clarity. I felt like I was getting really great response, um, but without getting too quick and edgy and sharp on the front. Depending on the setup, sometimes it can feel like it's almost ready to start before we are. And you get almost not, not this pre-start kind of impact, but you get the snap. That snap is great in certain settings, not exactly what I'm looking for in a large board tenor. I wanna have a little bit more weight to the response. I felt like with this setup, figuring this out, I was able to get some of that weight to the response, but at the same time get some of the resonance I was looking for. There's a clarity to the sound while it still had core. I was able to get it to open up um, some. And as I was going through, you know, a variety of these different and these different pieces, different etudes. Um, I found that I was, you know, it took a little bit of time, but I was, I found I was able to, to shape the color uh, to a certain extent to fit the, the various styles. Now, with all of these here, and like I've talked about before, it does take a different type of energy. I find myself a lot of times thinking a little bit more compact with my airflow. Um, but again, that's maybe not you know, unexpected because of the resonance properties of the carbon fiber. And frankly, of kind of all of the instruments we played, I find myself with the small board tenors having to change my approach a little bit more. With the large board tenor and with the C12 bass we had in, I actually felt that like the, while I was changing my approach a little bit, it wasn't nearly as drastic. It felt more natural to me. Um, and of course, we get a lot of the benefits of this. I actually took this back and put it on our scale back in our warehouse before I did the video here. This comes in at two pounds and 14 ounces minus the mouthpiece. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it, and it really balances well. That's one of the things that we've heard feedback on, especially the small bar tenors, is that they tend to be a little bit front heavy, which is why Butler um, started including the satellite counterweights. I think the overall hand balance is really great. If anything, it sits back on the shoulder a little bit, which for most folks is not a bad thing, especially again, if we are somebody who is having, you know, you know, medical issues, we're having arm issues, shoulder issues, whatever it might be. If we're having issues supporting and holding the instrument, that balance is a huge deal. If it's sitting back on the shoulder a little bit, that's not a bad thing at all, at least in my opinion here. And so, like I said, the, the more I've been playing through, even today while I've been doing the video, the more I've played it, the more I've been learning the playing characteristics of this horn, I think there's a lot of versatility to it. Um, it's something where I feel like I can really get it to, to open up. Um, and when I'm really trying to lay into some of this more, this heavier, you know, Mahler-esque type of 
large ensemble playing, but at the same time, it can have some lightness and delicacy to it. Um, I tried to take it through the different ranges, and again, the response in the lower register felt really had some great body to it, but again, felt articulate, felt controlled. Response going into the upper register felt clean and open. It didn't really feel like it was pinching down. So, I like I said, I think this is it, it's a great playing instrument. Now, it's not going to be a fit for everybody, obviously, but for those folks who are either, I mean, looking for the playing characteristics of an instrument like this, or, you know, are having, obviously having weight issues, etc., that's a consideration. Boy, it's really, really hard to beat. And, you know, kind of like we talked about with the other Butler options, very much in line in terms of price point with the other custom offerings. And I think it brings a lot of, you know, similar characteristics to the table in a lot of ways. So I'm really glad I had the opportunity to share the C10 with you. If you have experience with the C10 or some of the other Butler trombone options, or if you have questions about what we talked about, what we you heard today, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you haven't already done so, Think about hitting the like button on here. Think about subscribing to our channel so that you can be a part of our viewership community. We really, really enjoy all of the interactions we see from our community. And of course, you can find the Trombone Shop on Facebook, Instagram, and coming soon, TikTok. As always, thanks for watching.